I'm Chad Stewart, Curator of History here at the Charleston Museum. Today we are going to briefly explore a remarkable collection of South Carolina pottery that forms an important part of the museum's history collection. These pieces were created by an African-American potter commonly known as Dave, or David Drake. Dave was born into slavery around 1801 in the Edgefield District of South Carolina and was held in bondage by at least four men, the first being Harvey Drake, who operated a pottery with Abner Landrum near Edgefield. He was later transferred or sold within the Landrum family and was enslaved by the Reverend John Landrum and Franklin Landrum before finally ending up with Lewis Miles, who owned the Stony Bluff factory, where Dave would go on to produce some of his most famous work in alkaline glazed stoneware pottery. The pottery of David Drake is remarkable not only for its quality, he was a gifted potter, but also because of the fact that many of his pieces are signed and inscribed with original poetry. On one remarkable jar in the museum's collection, David Drake even references his own enslavement. It says, Dave belongs to Mr. Miles, where the oven bakes and the pot biles. Biles likely being a vernacular form of the word boils. With emancipation following the Civil War, Dave adopted the surname of the family he had been enslaved under at birth, calling himself David Drake. Although the exact date of his passing is unknown, it is believed David Drake died sometime in the 1870s. Working in the decades preceding the Civil War, Drake was subject to some of South Carolina's most oppressive laws that in addition to denying almost every form of personal freedom, strictly forbade African Americans from learning to read and write, the fear being that literacy would enable the enslaved community to communicate more effectively and potentially organize to undermine white power structures. Having been cultivated within this cultural context makes David Drake's work all the more remarkable. Not only was he a skilled craftsman able to throw and shape functional pottery on a large scale, but he also exhibited the skill and agency necessary to not only sign much of his work, but also to compose and inscribe it with his own original poetry. How was Drake able to get away with this remarkable expression of his own agency? The truth is, we don't really know. One theory says that Drake was taught to read and write while working in the newspaper shop owned by one of his early enslavers, Abner Landrum, who operated a newspaper called the Edgefield Hive. Even if his literacy can be explained this way, its acceptance by a larger, openly hostile society remains a mystery. With the products of his work being shipped all across the region, one must wonder how it was received or if it warranted contemporary notice by the wider society. The Charleston Museum is honored to house one of the most important collections of David Drake's work held in a public collection, including two of the largest vessels known by his hand, two storage jars with a capacity in excess of 40 gallons each. The early acquisition of David Drake pottery for the museum was itself revolutionary at the time then museum director, Laura Bragg, began collecting it in the 1920s and 30s. Bragg's expansion of the collection into heretofore neglected categories of African American crafts broadened the institution's focus. Although our collection of his work took shape early on and has been featured prominently for decades, in recent years David Drake's pottery has grown in popularity and has been the subject of several exhibitions and publications around the world. We invite you to visit the Charleston Museum and explore our remarkable collection of the work of David Drake, which remains part of our permanent exhibits chronicling the history of early South Carolina. Music